It's time for Recipe of the Day. Sometimes we remove recipes from the website if I just don't love them as much as I should. Like sometimes it's like older recipes from a long time ago. You know, I have been doing this. Cook the Story launched originally in 2009. So I've been doing this for almost 15 years. And the way I cook and the kinds of things I love have changed, right? So sometimes I'll look at one of those old recipes and just be like, oh, no, sweetie. So that happens. And then other times there's recipes that maybe aren't like super old, but they've been around for a while and nobody's commenting on them. I can tell from looking at the analytics in the back end that nobody's going to them. For some reason, they're just never clicking on it. They're never finding it. And so to reduce clutter on the site and just keep things nice and good, I will take those recipes off the site. And so that is what happened with today's recipe for shawarma chicken thighs, except what then happened was a couple of months later, I got an email from a younger gentleman who loves the recipe and makes it for his girlfriend and had it bookmarked and had gone to make it and it wasn't there anymore and he didn't know what to do. And so I emailed him the actual recipe and it turns out that he's a percussionist. I guess he wrote back to say thank you and I saw his link at the bottom of his email and I followed it and he's like played for like Ms. Rablin stuff and my son's a percussionist. So anyways, now I feel like I have this percussion chicken friend out there if you're listening. Hi, Brandon. So anyways, after sending the recipe to Brandon, I decided to just fix it up a little bit. I retested it and the original recipe was for the Instant Pot. And so I've added instructions for the oven and for grilling and just sort of rounded it out a little bit more. And now I have put it back up. It was originally on Cook the Story, but now it's on the Cookful because we have more chicken thigh recipes over there. Doesn't really matter. It is back up and I am so excited to be telling you about it. So first, what is shawarma traditionally? It is thin slices of meat that are stacked up on a skewer and then cooked on a vertical rotisserie. You've probably seen them spinning around in your favorite Middle Eastern restaurant or sometimes on food trucks. The original meat of choice was lamb, but today you can find them in beef, veal, turkey, and chicken varieties. There's often a lot of warm, delicious spices like cumin and coriander, cayenne, turmeric, sometimes cloves, nutmeg, and cinnamon are used. And so this has some of those flavors going on. And then the meat is often shaved off of that stacked skewer and served in a wrap or gyro. People pronounce that in different ways. I am talking about the thing spelled G-Y-R-O. Often there's a tahini sauce or tzatziki going on in there. Onions, tomatoes, lettuce. It's so good. I love that. So we're not doing any kind of rotisserie thing here. What we're just doing is we are cooking up some delicious, juicy chicken thighs with those seasonings and then shredding the meat. And then you can put it into those pitas or whatever flatbread you want to use. So it's about getting the flavor and the juiciness onto that meat at home. So you can have this for just a regular dinner at home and get those flavors going. So like I said, I'm using chicken thighs for this and I just find them much juicier than chicken breast. And I'm using boneless skinless because we're going to shred them after. It's just easier if they don't have bone. If you do have bone, all that's going to happen is whether you're in the Instant Pot or in the oven or grilling, you're just going to have to cook them for longer. Nothing else changes. Now I'm going to tell you the Instant Pot instructions first, and then I'm going to tell you the grilling and baking instructions. They're sort of more the same as each other. Okay, you start by mixing together a tablespoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, a pinch of cayenne pepper, and a pinch of cloves. And then you rub that all over the outside of six boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And then into your Instant Pot, you are measuring three quarters of a cup of water or chicken stock, and then a quarter cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of olive oil. Give that a stir in there and then you're laying your chicken thighs in a single layer right on that liquid. Now they're going to go in a little bit so that they get those flavors while they're cooking but they're not going to be fully submerged so that their spices stay on the tops. See what I mean? Now we have the one cup of liquid in there, the three quarters of a cup of water, a quarter cup of lemon juice and the two tablespoons of olive oil. If you have problems with your Instant Pot, I hear this from people that they don't know why but their Instant Pot gives them a burn notice all the time and that doesn't happen to other people. It does doesn't happen to me very often, although it did happen. Just this week, I was making oatmeal and I was following somebody's online recipe, but I had added a block of frozen spinach and mushrooms and garlic. And you're probably wondering, what is she talking about oatmeal? I love savory oatmeal. It's one of my favorite breakfasts. I make a big batch of it and then I have it in the mornings. Anyways, I was doing that. I don't usually use frozen spinach in it. I did. I think that was the culprit. So I did have a burn notice this week, but I don't usually. If your Instant Pot is prone to burn notices, what you can do is put a full cup of 
of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot and then use a trivet or rack that came with your Instant Pot and you're going to put your chicken right on there and then drizzle it with the lemon juice and olive oil. So we're getting the lemon juice and olive oil flavors onto the chicken, but we're not using so much water that the chicken's in that it's going to wash off all those spices. So you have the one cup of water underneath and then the lemon juice and olive oil on top. Or you could do what I do, which is the three quarters of a cup of water or chicken stock with the quarter cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom, and then the chicken goes right in there. So up to you. Then you seal up the Instant Pot or whatever kind of electric pressure cooker you have, and you cook it on high pressure cooking for 13 minutes, then allow the pressure to release naturally for two minutes. That just means don't do anything after the time has counted down for your 13 minutes of pressure cooking. Then turn the valve to vent. Once all the steam is out, take the chicken out. I always double check that it's not pink inside. It really should be done after those 13 minutes with the two minute rest, but you, you never know. Sometimes things happen, right? If it's still pink, just put the lid back on and keep it on keep warm for five minutes. It'll raise up and finish cooking in that time. Okay. So then when your chicken's done, use a fork to get it out of the liquid. We don't need that liquid. And then use some forks to shred up the meat. And then you're serving that in your pitas or other flatbread with sliced cucumber, red onion, and maybe some tzatziki. I will link to my homemade tzatziki recipe. I love it. Okay, now if you are baking or grilling your chicken shawarma, the only real difference, the thing that we're accounting for is that we don't need all that liquid, right? Because baking and grilling doesn't require that you have liquid in any kind of pot for the machine to function. You know what I mean? So what you're going to do is you're going to mix together the seasonings. It's a tablespoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, pinch of cayenne, pinch of cloves. And you're going to mix that in a bowl with two tablespoons of olive oil and a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then you're taking your six boneless, skinless chicken and thighs, unrolling them so that they're nice flat pieces, and you add them to that mixture, toss them to coat, and then I like to go ahead and marinate them in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, but up to 12 hours. And you know, if you're in a hurry and you don't have time to marinate these, it is totally fine. It's just that little bit of extra flavor, but it is not necessary. And then when you're ready to cook them, you are taking them out of the oven and letting them come a little bit to room temperature, like 15 minutes, and then adjust the rack in your oven so that one is on the lowest possible level. I've told you about this before. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, lightly oil a baking sheet, and then you're putting the chicken thighs unrolled in a single layer on that baking sheet, and you're putting the baking sheet on that lowest rack of the oven. That is going to help them brown underneath. They get nice and crispy and get that caramelization going, which is harder to get in the oven normally. You know what I mean? And then those bake until they're no longer pink inside and they're brown underneath. It's going to be about 20 to 23 minutes. And then you transfer them to a cutting board and give them a, a shred or a chop. And then as to grilling, you do the same seasoning mixture with the olive oil and the lemon juice, same marinating if you have time. And then those are going on to a high heat grill over direct heat. Again, unrolled into those flat pieces. And I know you know what I'm talking about, but I'm just going to say it again. You know how when you get boneless, skinless chicken thighs, they come in little bundles and they're kind of wrapped around where the bone originally was. But if you unwrap them, you get these nice flat, almost cutlets. They're a little misshapen, but they're thinner and they're going to cook more quickly, which means they have less chance of drying out. Okay. So you're unrolling them. You're doing all that seasoning to them and everything. And then you're sticking them unrolled on that hot grill until they're cooked through. It's going to be about six to seven minutes aside. You can leave the grill uncovered while they're cooking or cover it. It doesn't really matter. And so that is how you make chicken thigh shawarma. And I think you're going to love it. I know Brandon loves this recipe and so does his girlfriend. And I love it too. And I'm really happy happy to see it back out in the world again. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there, or join our Facebook group. I post the recipe of the day link every single day. You can always find this episode and the recipe that goes with it. Head to facebook.com slash groups slash recipe OTD. I look forward to seeing you there. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. 